Hello and welcome back to Bloodborne Part 6 on the PS4, and in this part we are exploring more of this raised altitude above central Yarnum. Another bloodstone shard, and a dead crow. Aw, oh, there's a baby carriage! Little babies. Dear Krang, Goo Goo Gaga, meanwhile giant man sleeps with little hat on. Kill Blobby. He was very clearly not kill Blobby. Nasty. Must kill Blobby. Blobby is escaping. Blobby's almost out of health. Shoot. No, not you. Don't block my shot. Damn it, he escaped. Uh, okay, so what's the deal with Blobby, as you call him? Blobby drops uh, weapon upgrade materials, usually. Ah. Sometimes, um, when we get to the Chalice Dungeons, then Blobby starts to drop blood gems. Okay. Time for rolling. So why are you destroying all these sacred runes? Because it's a thing to do. <laughs> but it's pointless. Exactly. It's diversion. <laughs> hey, this is not a mimic this time. Ah, uh, yes. This particular... Yes! This particular blood gem is kind of unique in this game. You also cannot ever open that door. I'm not really sure why that door is there. Um, we needed to get that blood gem because it has an ability um, that restores uh, some health per second. Now, I said in a previous part that it was going to be a little while before we can get one of those blood gems. I actually forgot that the game is nice enough to give you this unique health restorative blood gem rather early. Of course, we... Yes. So, uh, unlike uh, Dark Souls 1, where Cleric is, is just outright the wrong, the wrong choice, you can actually be a, a, you can actually have a healing spell in this game. It's, it's, ba it's basically like a healing spell, yeah, especially when you learn how to exploit it, because you, you, can hold, you can hold and alternate between two weapons at a time. More Bloodstone Shards. Unfortunately, we cannot equip any blood gems while we're in the world. We have to go back to the Hunter's Dream in order to, um, in, in order to change our equipment loadout. Well, that's not too bad. We, <laughs> and we got to play with Fat Man. Come with me, well, my fat, fat friend. Man ragdoll. <laughs> now let us... You know, Fat Man Ragdoll would probably be a, a rap artist of the 90s. Or, no, early 2000s. Fat... I mean, he would be, he would be like, like Raggedy Jim, Fat Man Raggedy, Fatty Rags. <laughs> I like Fatty Rags. So, where is the special emblem that we need to open the gate? The special emblem that we need to open the gate is uh, is an item that you get to purchase from the vendor in the Hunter's Dream. Believe it or not. Oh, all right. Most players will probably miss that, because you wouldn't think that you can just buy key items from a vendor. Usually keys are found as like a reward from the world from the world. And so, so we have got the red blood gem. And so we have successfully destroyed Pamela's mother's red brooch and have extracted a rather useful blood gem from it. So now, if we go back, so why didn't yeah? So why didn't you give uh, Pamela back her her mother's brooch? Be there, there's a there's a story reason why you don't want to give her back the brooch. You see, um, oh. if you give her back the brooch, first of all, you're admitting to her that her parents are dead. She does not know that her parents are dead. She just thinks that they're missing right now. Um, if you give her if you give her the brooch, of course she start she becomes melancholy as any child would when they find out that their parents no longer are alive. And eventually, I believe the little girl actually goes out. She tries she tries looking for either her I think I think she tries looking for her father and then she gets she gets eaten by the boar in the sewer. Ah. And you know that you only know that she gets eaten by the boar in the sewer cuz if you go down there you find um I think it's like a bloody white ribbon. Where the, where the pig is? In the zoo. Ah. Uh, that's that's pretty low. That's one per five. Is, yes. it, is, it, one per, is it one per five or is it one per three? It's one. It's one point of health every three seconds. Very well, 
Okay, one per three. One per three is honestly not is not terrible, but it feels pretty slow. Honestly, I wish it was either one per two or one for one. You can well, you can stack healing blood gems. Ooh, so, so you can eventually make it two for one. Oh yeah, uh, I think I think the oh, most. Oh yeah. I think the most I've ever had it is like eight eight points of health every three seconds. Uh, eight per three, which rounds out to one for one. So if you do, if you do, you can extrapolate how long it takes to refill a whole bar of health as long as you know how much health you're healing per minute. So you can time gonna go make a sandwich or, or grab a beer or do my laundry. <laughs> yeah, because uh, because uh, a one for one still means that uh, it still takes a relatively long time to heal up all the way. Even right now, even right now, it would take you ten minutes. Yeah. If it was one for one. Just, just bear in mind that it's a passive heal. It, it's a passive heal. It's not. It's not at all effective in combat. Oh, that is so much better. You see, uh, what a lot of games will do is that they'll have a, they'll, they'll trigger, a, they'll trigger states for your character, where if you're in combat, heal, uh, healing effects are either diminished or disabled. Yeah. I mean, in this in this game, it just just the sim simplicity is the rule. If an, an an interruption, an interruption like combat in the way of healing, it might as well be a game enforced limitation like disabling healing during combat. It's because because it's it's basically pointless. Right. We are currently on our way to Old Yarnum, and the way to Old Yarnum is hidden. Um, because when the healing church, uh, helped burn old Yarnum to the ground in order to eliminate the scourge that killed everybody there, they, they didn't, well, they didn't destroy the pathway there, they just made it hidden so that nobody could find it. Ah. Stupid shooting man. I'm not entirely sure if I like the charge attack on the spear. It's a bit too lengthy. All the, all the charge attacks um, are powerful. Um, they all take that same amount of like wind up time. So you get the flash, and then it works. And there's a guy over there who I'm pointing out. Nah, I don't really use power attacks all that much though. I knew it. That's precisely how I started out. Oh, beg pardon. You may call me. Alfred. Alfred of the Sideburns. Ligarius, hunter of vile bloods. So, what's and looker of directions. Might differ, but we are hunters. Wearer of black gauntlets. Why not cooperate and discuss the things we've learned? I won't cooperate. Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Take this to celebrate our acquaintance. So is this the guild system? Um, the g kind of not not with this guy though. There there are guilds in the game, quote unquote. This this guy this guy doesn't hold you to an oath right now. Just I, I guess as long as you don't try to kill this guy. I pray. Yeah, praise you. Alfred. Uh, praise Alfred, a scion of the church. May the good blood guide your way. Must be oodles for us to share. Like, just tell me what piques your interest. Oh God, do I go through all the dialogues right now? I'm going through all the dialogues right now, aren't I? Son know, of a bitch. <laughs> yep, this guy will give you backstory on the church, and it's really cool because otherwise the world is kind of empty, just like the Dark Souls games. <laughs> Counselors of the old church reside in the high stratum of the cathedral ward. That's a terrible place for them. Seek blood healing, and the church is willing. You should pay them a visit. Tell me about Bergenworth. Bergenworth is an old place of learning. Okay. And the tomb of the gods, carved out below Yarnum, should be familiar to every hunter. Well. Once, a group of young Bergenworth scholars discovered a holy medium deep within the tomb. This led to the founding of the Healing Church and the establishment of blood healing. In this sense, everything sacred in Yarnum can be traced back to Bergenworth. 
So who was the medium? It was, um... I'm trying to think right now. Um, how, how spoilerific is that? Okay, so they... So what... It's unclear. So we, we, we gain we gain two we gain two really important pieces of information well three really important pieces of information that the, the way to Bergenworth is blocked by a password. Um, the second piece is that um, members of the heal well the, the founders of the healing church um, who were studying at Bergenworth. Bye. Thanks for the information. The scholars that were studying at Bergenworth. Um, they discovered something. They dis yes, it was a thing, quote unquote, that they found in the tombs below Yarnum that basically created this whole Yarnum blood turn everything into beasts crazy thing. And I can't remember what the Why is that sarcophagus on a damn track? Because we found the hidden path. This man didn't want us to find it. Yes. Uh, more insight. Behind you. <laughs> That's where he came from. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Clyde, we get it. You like playing with the ragdoll. I love playing with the ragdoll. <laughs> it is so silly and fun. <laughs> Because otherwise, these people are spooky. <laughs> Another blood gemstone. Cool. Let us descend into the tomb in order to discover the hidden horrors within. More puppies. Silver Beast, we meet again. Docile though he be, he can be quite silly. Nah, they're bloodstone charred. And more rags all. <laughs> I do I do love traveling through these environments in order to in order to get to the lampposts. Um, it gives it gives you the sense of exploration, secrecy, while also and like we're traveling through Westfall for some reason. <laughs> Westfall, <laughs> and that when we finally start linking up the lampposts to each other, which is as easy as just finding a new lamppost, then fast traveling becomes a great asset to your time saving skills. A pungent blood cocktail. Yes, the pungent blood cocktail actually is an item I've never got the hang of because I never trusted it. The idea is we are in a world that is populated by blood-obsessed monsters. They smell it and they crave it. So the pungent blood cocktail creates a diversion that causes the enemies, I guess, to go to the place where you smash the bottle of pungent blood cocktail so that they're attacking it instead of you. I just never bought it, though. I never, I never trusted that. Like these guys are going to be aggroed by a pile of blood on the ground instead of me. Um, if you're under stealth at the time, it probably works. You know, it's the same principle as the pebble, after all. Yeah, yeah. That that the object is influencing their behavior. I agree. I just have you ever got have you ever gotten the pebble to work? Yes. Oh, yes. The pebble is very effective. Well, then it's the, pretty much the exact same principle. You use the pungent blood cocktail where you would throw the pebble and then uh, you proceed to do a stealth visceral on them. Yeah, well, probably sooner with the pungent blood cocktail because if you know which which way the enemy's looking and every enemy has a, has a sight spot and a blind spot, you just stay in the blind spot, sneak behind them, get all nice and wound up and then fire. So why are you buying uh, 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 the uh, the pastor's uh, robes? I I go through I go through all the costumes. Well, I go through as many costumes as as I can throughout throughout the game. Um, Gascoigne's armor actually is it, its advantage is it gives you early game defense against arcane. The problem with that is that early game there are like almost no enemies that actually use arcane attacks. Right. And an exchange, and every usually usually defense points are on an exchange point per, for point basis. Mm -hmm. Items that have high arcane defense, they might have low physical defense or low uh, bolt defense or blunt defense. It's 
it's everything has a plus has a pro and a con right Farewell, good hunter. But for now we're just we're just gonna get used to looking at that shawl on his back <laughs>